Again this week, the videos are exploring the various teaching methodologies used in adult education. We have described the active learning approach, and we will now explore our final topic in this section of the course, critical thinking problem solving methodologies, and we will examine their advantages and disadvantages. By the end of this video, you should be in a position to recognize when these methods would be most appropriate and how to maximize their use. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. Why are critical thinking and problem solving methodologies used in adult education? When might critical thinking or problem solving best be used? What are the advantages and disadvantages of critical thinking and problem solving methodologies? And what are some good practices associated with critical thinking and problem solving? As mentioned in the previous video, there are few careers today that do not require the employee to solve problems by independently or collaboratively engaging in higher order thinking. At a time when information is literally at our fingertips through digital storage and search mechanisms, rote learning and unquestioning absorption of subject matter content is no longer required or preferred. The ability to question the status quo, analyze situations or issues, generate solutions which themselves are analyzed, and then synthesize findings into feasible recommendations are invaluable skills for success in almost any field, and are certainly required for success in the upper levels of education. To fulfill one of its primary purposes, adult education must be designed to scaffold the development of these thinking skills in our students. Critical thinking and problem solving activities require students to source, analyze, and synthesize resources, and then use them to defend a point of view. At a higher level, debates, cases, capstone projects, problem-based learning, simulated research, labs, studios, and other discipline-specific approaches are all examples of critical thinking and problem solving activities. These may be integrated as class activities done in small groups and debriefed in class, or as major individual or group assignments. The most sophisticated of these activities involves more than one course in the semester, extends over the entire semester, and may be part of a competition judged by external experts. The critical thinking problem solving approach has the following advantages. It helps students to make connections among disparate content, synthesizing various facts into an organized whole in order to solve problems. It encourages students to become lifelong learners and provides them with the skills to continue learning. It develops a respect for the process of acknowledging and building upon the contributions of others. It develops the desire and ability to question the status quo, to analyze evidence, and to come to logical and feasible conclusions, all of which are desirable characteristics of the modern citizen. It enhances the student's value in the fields of employment and further education. It readies the students to participate in the development of new knowledge in either academia or business and industry, and prepares them to assist in the solving of real-world problems. It develops the ability to think critically about the wealth of information now available, particularly from unedited sources, and thus makes the student less vulnerable to manipulation or faulty decision making. Though critical thinking and problem solving methods are recommended for most adult learning settings, they are best used in situations in which the content is sufficiently complex to be suitable for analysis and there is more than one correct answer or approach. The students have a solid foundation of basic content knowledge, the teacher has the ability, time, and resources to directly teach the necessary thinking skills to the students. It should not be assumed that students have developed these by osmosis during their educational experiences. Apart from the effort required to design and prepare for critical thinking and problem-solving activities, the only other criticism of them is that they are challenging and difficult for students who typically are accustomed to passively memorizing and then regurgitating content learned by rote. As such, they may be met with resistance or apathy, and students may require support and modeling to be successful in them. Teachers must show patience and skill at scaffolding the thinking process required by these activities. As well, teachers must be prepared to give up some control over both the process and the product when these types of activities are introduced. For both novice and seasoned teachers, this can be both exhilarating and terrifying. Nevertheless, the advantages of these methods make them worth the time and effort required. Critical thinking and problem-solving approaches will work well in many settings and for diverse content. When they are chosen, ensure that the potential for student learning is maximized by following these suggestions. Choose this approach when the students will be required to extend their learning beyond simple application of rote knowledge. Ensure the students have a firm grasp of foundational knowledge before seeking to have them apply it to problem-solving. For this reason, these types of activities are generally used in upper-level courses. 
Design problems are situations that are as close as possible to real-world scenarios. Provide multiple opportunities to practice thinking skills with formative feedback prior to assigning a graded activity. And provide direct instruction on how to judge the validity of source material. Information and media literacy is a critical skill in the 21st century. Provide instruction or resources on how to acknowledge source material appropriately using the system specific to the discipline. Structure the activities in ways that scaffold the development of thinking skills in a step-by-step -step fashion, allowing for debriefing and feedback at each step. And provide a detailed rubric that will guide students in understanding what is required to be successful. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. Which philosophy of adult learning is most consistent with the critical thinking and problem-solving approach? Would critical thinking or problem solving be more likely to be used in formal, informal, or non-formal adult education? What adult education providers would be most likely to use critical thinking or problem solving? And how might critical thinking or problem solving methods be combined with other approaches? And in what ways could this combination address some of the disadvantages or limitations of critical thinking and problem solving methodologies?